Hi friends, I'm Isabel and today I'm going to walk you through my whole process for creating this piece. It doesn't have a name yet, so if you have a name for this that you think would be perfect, please let me know in the comments section. So we're going to start off with my thumbnailing process. I like to work in Procreate because I have access to any color I want and I can change thickness and it's not very messy. Um, this little drawing here, which was, I don't know, just me sketching a little portrait. And then I saw this, I don't remember whose drawing it was and I didn't save it anywhere, but I saw a drawing that had a pose that I really liked and it was kind of this, this pose here. So I sort of took the pose and um, scribbled a bit more around it. So I played around with that idea a little bit, um, did some more composition studies. Uh, this was another um, sort of play off of that idea, just really roughly, roughly sketching out a concept. So I don't try to make these perfect, I don't try to make the anatomy perfect. Really it's about getting the idea down and then sketching some values. Okay, so I sketched out this little rough idea based off of a different pose that I found on Pinterest, so kind of combining these two, or this idea with this other pose. And then what I do is I make another layer on top and I'll kind of roughly sketch out some basic colors and the really, really basic idea of just this girl sitting and she kind of has a waterfall skirt thing going on. So there's that. Um, and then I added this kind of warm tint on top because I was playing around to see how that would look. Uh, I played around with a different composition for the waterfall, so having it more come out this way as opposed to being more refined. So this is like a, you know, warmer colors and all of that. And then I was like, I don't really like how this part is looking. It looks unnatural. So I added a little cliff and I was sort of playing around with that. And my problem with this piece was that I wanted it to be more detailed and I had specific spots where the colors needed to be, but I didn't quite know what I was gonna do with this whole situation over here. So I just started painting. And I was like, okay, I'm just gonna paint the body, which is what you see right here. Um, and then I'll figure out what I wanna do with it and procreate. So I did that and I kind of drew on top of it and tested out this idea. And I was like, okay, I like that. Let's get into it. After I sketch out my main idea in Procreate, I get to drawing it. So I draw it out on a big sheet of paper and then I use the graphite transfer method to transfer it to my watercolor paper. And then usually I will go over um, my sketch with a Premier Prisma, Prismacolor Premier pencil in purple because that's the color I have and I like purple. So I do that and I find that that doesn't really show up that much um, underneath the painting. I paint with pretty heavy layers though. And then I get into painting the body and the skin. A lot of times I will put a big wash of color over the entire painting, but for this painting, um, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do with the background and I kind of needed to just get into painting it because it was due for an art class and I had to do progress checks and all of that. So I decided to just paint the body. Um, I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. I think I need to spend a bit more time learning to paint realistic skin tones, but yeah, overall I'm happy with how the skin turned out on this one. Let me know if you want a video about my process for painting skin tones. I'm not the most experienced painter, but if you think it would be helpful, totally uh, let me know um, if that's something that you would want to see, because I can make that happen. 
a lot of it is just layering and layering and layering because honestly that's how watercolor works you just layer and layer and layer until you decide it's finished so it's mostly put down some color and blend it out and then put down more color and then blend it out I do tend to be over cautious when it comes to painting skin tones because it's hard to go lighter once you go too dark, but also painting on white paper makes it seem a lot darker than it actually is, and you'll see once I start putting in the background that it gets a lot lighter. It's important to use studies as a method of learning when you're not entirely confident on what you're going to paint, especially for a big piece such as this one where you don't really want to mess up um, and watercolor is really hard to fix mistakes in. So I wanted to have this waterfall scene, but I've actually never painted a waterfall before. So I took this time to uh, spend a little bit of time in my sketchbook, which is what you're seeing now. And I just painted some water some waterfalls from reference, uh, just to get a better um, idea of how to actually paint them before I stuck them on the big painting. And after a couple of studies, I think I did about half a page, maybe. I felt pretty comfortable with how to paint waterfalls. <laughs> So after doing those studies, I wanted to just kind of sit on what I had learned a bit, and so I started on the background. Again, this was kind of a weird experience for me because not only have I not really painted much foliage in watercolor, I also tend to just throw color on the page and I'm not used to um, carving out these shapes because I mostly just paint. Yeah, so this was interesting. Um, I was struggling with this paper, and I'm not really sure why. It's the Blick Cold Press paper, and I found, um, as I've used more watercolor papers, uh, that this paper really soaks up paint fast. It's definitely difficult to um, pool the watercolor on it so that you can get an even wash, and it kind of feels like you're scraping your brush on the paper a little bit. It's the first paper that I got. Well, actually, no, it's not. It's the first higher quality paper that I got. And so I was kind of used to it. And then I, I tried a couple of others in um, sketchbook form and I tried their hot press as well. And it is a different experience. So yeah, I'm not really sure what was going on with that, but this is the biggest pad of paper that I have. So I wanted to use that for this piece. I thought I was going to go way more detailed than I actually did, which was um, surprising, but also not. I'm kind of an impatient person, which is why I didn't plan out the entire piece to begin with. So you'll see me doing a lot of just experimenting and throwing color all over the place. So I worked on this section of the painting for a bit. I was having this pretty intense fear of the white page, so I just kept going over the spots that I'd already put paint on. And I don't know, I wish I had planned this out a bit more. The final result is um, very blobby and there's kind of a lot of detail concentrated on this one side. And then I got kind of sick of details and just sort of blobbed everything all over the place. But overall, I'm pretty happy with the final result. Thank you. 
So I did a lot of wet on wet painting for this piece. I was trying to have a mix of, um, you know, foliage that looks like it's just kind of in the distance blurry. It's not the focal point. Um, but I also wanted to have some details. So I mainly just did this, uh, sort of wet wash with a bunch of blobs of color, different, you know, shades of green and let those all blend together. And then I layered on top of those to carve out shadows and, um, highlights and all of that. I didn't really want to leave any white on the page except for in the waterfall so that that would really stand out. You will see me, um, kind of avoiding the hair for a bit because I wasn't sure if I wanted to paint it and I, in the end I'm glad that I did paint it. Still getting killed. I got friends full of melanin who say they ain't through with the way our country goes. Got a lot of work to go, I know for sure, but I'll be. I've been getting out in nature a bit more now that it's springtime where I live and this piece was inspired by the tranquility of nature and just how calm and happy it makes me feel to be outside in the sunshine. Um, I live in a place with a lot of really gorgeous hiking spots and so this this came out of that. Um, I was a bit surprised because I don't normally paint, um, I, I don't know. I guess my larger pieces don't tend to be as, uh, tranquil as this one, but I am really happy with this piece. So, yeah, I'm glad that I painted it, and I'm really happy that I get to be outside more. <laughs>
So the way that I did this waterfall was I just layered really, really, really thin washes um, on top of each other and uh, made sure to blend them out. So I just tried to build up the general shapes. I, there was a bit of a um, proportion slash perspective issue at the end. Uh, I don't think, you know, this quadruple waterfall thing would feed into such a small little stream. So yeah, I, that's one, one place where I wish I had planned out the painting a little bit more, but it was really relaxing to paint the waterfall, even though it was a bit stressful since I've never actually painted one before. And I think we're kind of in the struggle bus ugly stage right now, um, especially with these rocks and uh, just feeling like I wasn't really getting the result I wanted and how was I going to get the results. And once I finally managed to cover up most of the white of the page, I think that feeling started to recede a little bit because things looked more cohesive. But for now, I just kept working on the waterfall. Uh, when every painting session, I would have to force myself to just add some more color to the page, you know, go for that one little white spot. I think this took me about seven hours to complete, which feels like a lot, but probably about two hours of that was spent just staring at the page. So uh, that's why this video is shorter than I thought it was going to be, because there was a lot of time of me just um, not doing anything. And also... Uh, some parts would be a little boring to watch um, in a slower pace, especially just like layering and layering and layering and layering. Um, so I sped those up for you a little bit. Hope you don't mind. I was promising a longer video this week, but maybe I will do a real-time video in the future. Um, so let me know if you want to see that. I can do that. Yeah, so then I started building up the contrast of the waterfall a little bit more and of the uh, river that it flows into. I think contrast is really what brings together a piece. It doesn't feel finished unless you have enough contrast. So I started adding just little bits of color here and there and, you know, slightly altering the hue of each wash so that it would get some nice variation and depth in the final painting. I really did struggle with the uh, river, especially getting that reflection right. I think that's something I probably should have practiced a little bit more before I attempted it because that's something that I painted maybe once or twice. But then I got everything covered in at least some color and started building up the shapes of the foliage and uh, I added a little bit of some flowers uh, here and there and just kept layering more and more and more color on it. I think the bottom half, especially the bottom left, got a little bit too dark, but that's okay. I'm still happy with the final results and it was uh, really satisfying to paint. So that's pretty much it. I mean, I just keep layering, uh, but 
I would like to make a video about where my ideas sort of come from. If that's something that you're interested in, let me know. I know I touched on this before, but I do really wish that I had uh, planned out the final piece a bit more. I'm just, I'm so impatient. And so what I was doing was I had the basic idea and I was like, oh, I'll just figure it out while I go. Even though uh, watercolor is really hard to, you know, paint over if you don't like how it turned out. So I don't know. It feels weird to me to have all that detail in the up, upper left corner, and that doesn't really translate um, into other areas of the painting. But that's okay. I, I deal with it. And it was fun to play around with wet on wet, because I feel like I don't utilize that technique as often as I would like to. Um, it is very fun to do. I've been painting with a lot of blues and greens lately which I'm pretty happy about. Um, I maybe want to try painting with more warmer colors, so maybe I'll do a limited palette video about that. I don't know. We'll see. So yeah, stay tuned for that. If you enjoyed this, I'd love if you would subscribe or like the video um, and let me know what you think about this piece in the comment section. Thank you so, so much for watching. And I will see you next week. Alright, bye!